be the latest acquisition for a lot of the collectors in the DC universe. And yes, I'm not happy with the alternate head that we got from McFarland. So I decided to customize my own. And let me show you what I think we should have been presented with. I went ahead and finished up my figure and reboxed it. And this is what I would like to have picked up in the store. Unfortunately, it wasn't that way. So I decided to go ahead and customize mine. So I'm revisiting a figure that I have already customized in the past. And from what you can see, I did add a, a black wash and I added actually graphite to the grays to give it a more of a leather look. It's got a different sheen in, the, in this kind of light. So it looks totally different than from the packaged figure. So this figure has already been finished, has been worked on several months back. I just went back and added the custom head. And we'll talk about that custom head in a moment. It's actually, if you don't recognize it, a Jim Lee Bruce Wayne head, 3D printed. And I just went ahead and added the gray hair. I didn't like the solid gray that was in the alternate reprint. It had to have some texture in the hair to make it more believable. And as you can see, it matches the rest of the actual paintwork in the figure. So anytime you're customizing your figures, take a look at this. Which one would you rather have? The one on the right or the one on the left? Personally, the one on the right just doesn't cut it for me. Everything else looks great on it, but the custom figure looks that much better. Uh, once again, re, uh, returning to my original comment, customizing is all about making the figure your own. In this case, I decided to paint the custom 3D figure I wanted to see in the Thomas Wayne character. It's true, it doesn't look like the comic book character. I totally understand that, but I'm working with what I have and what is available in the market. I'm not a sculptor and I don't have a 3D printer, but I do want to see my characters come to life. So the best way for me to do it is to get my hands on an actual figure and start working it until I see the desired look. Now the rest of the images that you're going to see happen to be different takes of this same figure. And no, I don't have the weapons in his hands because I believe that the characters use more than just the guns they come with. There's so many more accessories that these figures should have come with that we did not get. And unfortunately we have to scrounge through other pieces to make do or create the custom that we want. In this case, I had a few other little pieces lying around and I put it into his hands. But I want you to take a look at the sculpt itself. I did not print it. I had this uh, purchase that I made on eBay and this is the product that I got. And while we're talking about this, Let's address a few of those questions that come up. Where did you get the 3D printed head sculpt? Do you have a 3D printer? The neck is too long. What paint are you using? Let's get into a few of those questions to help some of you out. And that way you can avoid some of the pitfalls that I went into before even getting into these figures. I wish that there was information like this that was available to me, even though there's so many many thousands of YouTube videos, I just didn't find the right one. Now these 3D printed, 3D printed sculpts are resin. They are coming from Action Figure Customs, one of the sellers on eBay, he's out of Canada. They are exceptionally well detailed. They are actually to scale. And if you're gonna purchase from him or the McFarland figures, make sure it is the Mezco size. He actually has a selection of sizes in there. Now take a look at the head. It is hollow. Unless you have a peg that is that large on the figure, then it'll fit. If not, it's just not gonna stay there. You're gonna have to accommodate or retrofit this head to fit the peg on the existing figure you have. Usually on the McFarland figures, it's a thin peg with a ball on the end. Now the best way to do this is to fill it with the putty of your choice. In this case, I am using epoxy sculpt part A and B, and I'm only filling in the hole. Do not fill it to the very edge where the chin is. It's gonna be 
it's very difficult to attach the head. You'll have to dremel too much of it out. Now, as you can see, there's a gray lip on the back. That is to make sure that the head covers around the neck. In any of these, you have to make sure that the head sits properly on the existing body. Otherwise, you're gonna have the problem that the neck is too long. Now, this figure here fits great. The head has the extra space in the back. It hits directly over the neck. It covers it. This one has a problem. No matter how much you drill into it or around it on the inside, it still sits too high. It doesn't wrap around. And even if I put in that lip on the back, it's still gonna sit too high because it's not wide enough to cover that neck. While the second head is much larger uh, diameter on the inside, being able to grab the entire neck and sit lower onto it, making it look that much more natural. Remember, that anytime you're customizing your figures is because you want to see what you have envisioned, whether it's on paper or because you actually came up with it in just a spur of the moment. It's all about getting into the colors that you want to see realized. And that is different on every person. Nobody sees the same color blue or the same color red. Everybody has a distinguished look on that. Which leads us to what paints are you using? Now myself, in particular, I'm using the testers and the model masters paints simply because I already have those. But once I'm out of those, because those are now out of existence, I'll be going into Vallejo and Citadel. The Vallejo is because they have beautiful, beautiful colors for airbrushing. And the Citadels simply because they have extremely designed colors that are great for hand brushing or dry brushing. Both of those work really well together and the pigments are very durable. So I hope you liked the video. If you do like it, please give me a thumbs up, share it, ask some questions, no problem. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Enjoy your customizing. I'll leave you with some video of the finished product.